Hi guys, it's Jazz and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, what's up? Hello, hit subscribe and stick around for more. In today's video, I thought I'd give you guys a chin filler update one year later. It's been a whole year since I've had chin filler. If you haven't already seen that video, I will link it in the description down below and I'll put it in like a little card if it's a sign. Or maybe this side, not down there. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. And I will give you a rundown of my actual experience and what it was like to have the filler, how much it hurt, what I recommend getting it done, all that information that you probably want before you get filler. And then I will obviously go through now what it's like one year later after having filler. Do what you need to do. I'll be, I'll be right here waiting, or if not, continuing okay so jumping straight into the video so let's talk about where i actually got my filler first if you haven't already checked out my original video it's in there but i'm going to repeat myself a tiny bit just to give a bit of a recap because it's been a whole year so the place that i went was transform transform was 100 percent the best place i ever went to get filler out, out of two just just to clarify i've only been to one other place but still they gave me a rundown of everything it wasn't just like oh yeah you look so much better like they gave me the whole health and safety like we could get a blood clot we could die there was a lot of stuff that they they pre-warned you about and they're really like do you need it though and i'm like Yes, I need it though. So the, the first place that I ever went to get filler was honestly the worst experience on the planet. And I, I bruised so bad. It was horrendous. It was not a great experience at all. But when I went with Transform, I when I tell you I had no bruising, like there was barely the there was barely a red mark where the needle had gone in originally. That is how good they are there. But when I say best experience, I mean 100% best experience. So just to clarify, this is not an ad. This is 100% my recommendation. Just do your own research. Do not, don't just go on my recommendation. Don't just go because I think it's a great place. Do your own research, research the clinic, research the practitioner that's gonna do it. Just research everything. Don't just settle. Definitely keep digging and digging until you're happy with what you find because the last thing you want is somebody to inject something into your face that could completely, completely mess you up. So just, do you research? Moving on to the type of filler that I had in my face. So talking about the type of filler that I actually had, there's loads of different types of dermal fillers, but the one that I had is, I'm gonna read it because Juvedin, 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 Vicross. But I had exactly one mil put into my chin. I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting to have more put in my chin originally. I was hoping for two mil. I really felt in my mind that I really needed like this nice prominent pointed chin. But when I had the consultation and when I had it done, she was like, look, dude, you're good. You only need one mil. And most of it was just to balance my face anyway, because um, I'm lopsided. But I did have a little bit more put in my, whatever this side is, this side of my face, because uh, it's a bit wonky. My face is like slightly off this. The side does this, the other one, if I'm lucky, it kind of like, it doesn't, it doesn't do it. I don't know why, but my, fa my face is just squiffy, okay? And for one minute filler, I did pay around 300 pounds. I cannot for the life of me remember exactly how much I paid, but I know I paid roughly 300 pounds and that was with a discount on top of that. That is roughly how much you would pay for one mil, depending on obviously who you go to, the higher end kind of places charge a little bit more because you're actually getting better people <laughs> and then obviously the lower places still charge a lot but not with not so great people okay typically the duridum vicross lasts between 6 to 24 months it really depends on your metabolism your body the way your body breaks things down and where you get it but there's a lot of factors that come into it i have a really fast metabolism it's great on many levels except when it comes to getting filler so let me insert some pictures for you. So this is a picture of me before filler. This is my little chin. Where is she? I don't know, but she's there. And then this is a picture after I had the filler done. So this is a few days later after having the filler. So you can see she's looking, she's looking plump. She's looking chin fillery. Yeah, so <laughs> my descriptive words are on point today. But as you can see in the pictures, there is quite a big difference between the before and after. And I was, I was very pleased. And now let me show you a picture of before, after, and my chin currently, because these are, these are important photos that we need to see. Yeah. I mean, it's still there. Like she still has a chin. The reason that my chin filler has not completely disappeared yet is simply because 
it's obviously still there. When I touch it now, it doesn't feel nearly as full or even as hard as it did before. I mean, as soon as I had it done, it genuinely felt like my chin was out here. Right now, it, I can tell it's still there, but it doesn't feel weird. It just feels like a chin, I guess. I mean, it's still in there, but definitely, definitely not as much as it was. So to answer the question I think we're all dying to know, how long did the chin filler actually last? I would say that the chin filler actually lasted for a full, for about seven to eight months. I had a proper chin for probably around seven to eight months. That is, that is genuinely the lifespan that I had it for. That seven to eight month period was when it was the most prominent and now it's kind of looking a little bit more like it was originally. Am I planning on having more filler? Yes, definitely. I mean, while we're all locked away, I don't I don't really see the point. Because then only me and Kai can admire my beautiful chin and I don't want to waste those eyes when I want the world to see my beautiful chin, okay? But my plan is not to have it every year. I'm trying to go for every other year just because I don't want to get too much of it and I don't want it to build up and and because some of the complications of having a lot of filler in your face, like I said in the original video, the chin was explained to be like an abyss. Like you can get as much filler as you want in there, but it is very possible that it's gonna move around your face. The same with any kind of filler that you put in your face, whether it's on your cheeks, your jaw, your chin, it can move around your face. And the last thing that I would want is my chin filler to go like, on my face <laughs> okay i like my face the way it is i just i think it's called cushion face am i wrong pillow face i think it's either called cushion face or pillow face i just don't want my face to go puffy kind of give my face a break let it let it do its thing naturally let it let it pass through my system on its own and then come back and see what we can do i am looking at other options too maybe a chin implant maybe a neck lift i don't know look we all have our own securities, okay? Mine is the chin. Give me a chin, okay? Mother nature, what happened? If you have any questions that I haven't answered you guys already, just leave them in the comments down below and I will answer them as best as I can. But that's it for now. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below what your favorite parts and that's it. So love to see you, bye.